Well, good morning. How you doing today? I hope that you're doing good. This is Jeremiah Smith, and we are here with coffee and confessions. Praise the Lord. I hope that you got you something to drink there. You got you some tea or got you some water, got you some coffee. Hey, well, I hope that wherever you have there that it helps you today to do your confessions with me today, and I believe it'll be a blessing to you. You know, we always like to take about, oh, 12 to 13 minutes and do some confessions. You can fit it in your lunch, or you can do it before you take off to do your day, and it just kind of sets your week, it sets a, sets a tone for your week, and I believe that it'll be a blessing to you as you do these confessions. By the time I get, thr- get done, I think you're, you'll have it injected in your veins, lots of scriptures, And I think that you're going to be pumped up by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, we always like to start out with just a few scriptures. And I was going to look over at 3 John real quick. And 3 John, the first chapter, says, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Isn't that important? Make sure our souls prosper. And he says, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou, thou walkest in truth. I have no greater joy to hear that my children walk in truth. I like that. Isn't that good? It made him happy to know that they were walking in truth. You know, there's a lot of people that walk in a lot of lies out there. You know, but God wants good things for you. He said he wants you to prosper and be in good health. He's got good things for you. And it made uh, John happy to know that they were prospering and they had truth in their spirit and in, in their soul and their heart. Think about that today, you know. And that's what we're going to do today with Coffee Confessions. He, we're going to be pumping out the truth and speaking the truth. And I believe the truth will make your week a whole lot better, praise the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and get into this today. We're going to start in Psalms 103.2, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Before we get into these benefits here that we're going to go through, you know, you can do these confessions with us. You can go to jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com, and you can do these confessions with me, right along with me here, and uh, just hit the uh, Pages tab and go into the confessions, and we literally go straight through the confessions that are on there. So we're going to go ahead and go through these, and you can get there if you'd like. Pause it right here until you can start with us if you'd like. And uh, we're just going to start at the very top and go right down through here. We're just speaking, calling those things that be not as though they were for our week. Speaking good things for our week. And if nothing else, it's great meditation for you. And it'll charge your spirit and get you encouraged about what God's going to do for for you this week. Praise the Lord. So here's some of the benefits. He has forgiven all my sins. He's my healer. I received my healing and health today. My life is redeemed from destruction. I'm crowned with his loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies my mouth with good things, so my youth is renewed like the eagles. I like that. Yes, is your youth renewed like the eagles today? Well, you know, start speaking it. My youth is renewed like the eagles, praise the Lord. He executes righteousness and judgment for me against oppression. I am free. You know, maybe you're having some trouble with some bondage today. You know, start speaking the right things. You say, well, I'm still in bondage. Well, that's where you start, you know, releasing your faith is by saying, I am free. Jesus said, for who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so you start right where you're at. Start with your mouth. You know, that's how you got saved is by speaking it, right? And that's how you're going to get free. You need to start speaking it over your life, praise the Lord. He says, he that satisfies my mouth with good things so my youth is renewed like the eagles. He executes righteousness and judgment for me against oppression. I am free. He makes known his ways to me. I am his child and I follow him. He, I receive his grace and mercy and obtain it in times of need. Boy, I don't know about you, but I like to have grace and mercy every day. You know, his mercies are new every morning. You know, and you can enjoy his mercy right now, praise the Lord, right there where you're at in your car, on your motorcycle, right there, you know, on your couch, wherever you're at there. If you're in some different, uh, some secluded area, you know, you can enjoy his mercy this morning right there where you're at, praise the Lord. Well, we're going to get into just a few prayers here. I have three prayers that we're going to pray, and I believe that they'll change your life if you'll pray these prayers on a regular basis. They have mine. And, you know, Paul knows exactly what to pray. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament inspired by the Holy Spirit. I believe Paul knew some good things to pray. Don't you believe that? If God entrusted him to write so much of the Word by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I think that he had some good prayers that we must need to get a hold of. And these are three great prayers that I believe will change your life if you'll apply these to your life. 
Well, we're going to start with the first one in Ephesians, the first chapter in the 16th verse. It says, you have given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation of Jesus Christ. I think that the eyes of my understanding are being enlightened to know the hope of your calling and the riches of a glory of your inheritance in the saints. You're revealing to me the exceeding greatness of your power according to the working of your mighty power, which raised Christ Jesus from the dead and set him at your right hand. Notice how I just put myself in that prayer, praise the Lord, and I applied it to my own life. Let's do that again here in Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th verse. It says, Grant me, according to your riches and the glory, to be strengthened with might by your spirit and my inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart by faith, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. I praise you, Lord, that you're able to do exceedingly, oh, isn't that good? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in me. You know, he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think, by the power that's working in you. You can do a whole lot more than you think you can do because that resurrection power that's living on the inside of you. And that's what we're praying for. Praise the Lord. Colossians, the first chapter, the ninth verse, it says it like this. It says, I pray that you'll fill me with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that I might walk worthy of you unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of you. Strength with all might according to your glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness unto you, Lord, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Boy, that's a good prayer right there, isn't it? You think about that today. According to the glorious power and to all patience and long suffering. I don't know about you, but I like having patience. The Bible says if you have patience, you won't want any good thing. Oh, that's powerful to think about. All the things that you want in this life, if you can have some patience, God can bring them to you and bless your life. Praise the Lord. So those are three great prayers, and I believe that you're going to see some great things happen in your life just by praying those prayers that are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Well, we're going to get into some great confessions here for fear and worry. Are you dealing with some fear and worry today? No, you never wouldn't be dealing with fear and worry. No, 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 no. We're going to get the speak the word over your life so that you don't have fear and worry today. Praise the Lord. Let's just start at the top and just start confessing with me. I am the body of Christ and Satan has no power over me. I overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21 and 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. I will fear no evil for you are with me, Lord. Your word and your spirit comfort me. Psalms 23, 4. I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Isaiah 54, 14. No weapon for and against me shall prosper for my righteousness is of the Lord. Isaiah 54, 54, 17. Whatsoever I do shall prosper, for I'm like a tree by rivers of water. Psalms 1, 3. The Lord, you have delivered me from the evils of this world, for it is God's will. Galatians 1, 4. No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. Psalms 91, 10. For you have given your angels charge over me, and they keep me in all my ways. Psalms 91, 11. In my pathway is life, and there is no death. Proverbs 12, 28. I'm a doer of the word, and I'm blessed in my deeds. James 1, 22 through 25. I take the shield of faith and stop everything the enemy brings against me, Ephesians 6, 16. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I forbid any sickness to come on me, Galatians 3, 13. I overcome by the blood of Christ and the word of my testimony, Revelations 12, 11. The devil flees from me because I resist him in Jesus' name, James 4, 7. The word of God is forever settled in heaven, Psalms 1, 19, 89. And great is the peace of my children for they're taught of the Lord. Amen. Isaiah 54, 13. Well, I don't know how you read these without getting excited and getting pumped up. Praise the Lord. You know, God wants to do some wonderful things in your life, and we're just injecting the word in your veins, speaking it over your life, causing good things to happen. And uh, these are some great confessions. We're going to be talking about material needs. Are you needing some stuff here today? we got some great confessions for stuff. You know, everybody goes through things when they need things. And you think about today, you know, maybe someone's having issues with getting the things that they need for their lives, you know, for their ministry, for their purpose, for their family. Maybe the baby today needs some things. Well, you know, these great these are great confessions. You need to start speaking the right things over your life. Let's go ahead and get into this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, poverty, sickness, and death, Galatians 3, 13, and Deuteronomy 28. For poverty has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. I am rich because of the blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22. I delight myself in the Lord, and he gives me the desires of my heart, Psalms 37, 4. I have given... 
and is given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, Luke 6.38. I have all sufficiency of all things to abound all good works, 2 Corinthians 9.8. For my God has made all grace abound toward me, 2 Corinthians 9.8. There is no lack, for my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. Boy, those are some great scriptures there for helping you with your material needs today. Well, you know, we also got some great scriptures for wisdom and guidance, you know. And a lot of people, they need some direction. Maybe they need the Lord to show them which way to go. And these are the great scriptures to help you with guidance and wisdom. You say, well, Jeremiah, you know, you have no idea what's going on with me. Well, it's a good thing to start being on the offense and speaking the right things to help you get going in that direction, right? You know, if you had a bicycle, you know, you know, it's not going to do anything if it's just laying there. But if you get up on the bicycle and you start pedaling, you know, God can guide it. You know, if you're if you're on the bike going somewhere and you when you start speaking the words, you know, God starts causing things to get you where you need to go. You need to start speaking it. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, the word talks about that. And uh, we're going to get into that right now. We're going to do some great confessions for guidance and wisdom for you today. The spirit of truth abideth in me. He teaches me all things. He guides me into all truth, John 16, 13. I have a function from the Holy One, and I know all things, 1 John 2, 20. God gives me wisdom freely, James 1, 5. One translation, as I understand, I, I'm trying to remember where it's at there. It talks about how he, when he gives you liberally, or he gives you wisdom liberally there or freely, it's like he has an open hand for you to take it today, you know. So he gives it to you freely. He wants you to have it. So God gives us wisdom freely, James 1, 5. I'm always at the right place at the right time. My steps are ordered by the Lord, Psalms 37, 23. I have perfect knowledge of every circumstance I come up against, James 1, 5. I trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5. In all my ways I acknowledge him and he directs my path, Proverbs 3, 6. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, Psalms 119, 105. He will perfect that which concerneth me, Psalms 138.8. I let the word of Christ dwell me richly in all wisdom, Colossians 3.16. I follow the good shepherd. I like that. I follow the good shepherd, for I know his voice and a stranger. I will not follow, John 10, 3 through 4. I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind, by the word, Romans 12. Two, praise the Lord. Isn't that good? Well, you know, we're going to do some last uh, confessions here on comfort and strength. Maybe today you're needing some comfort and you're needing some strength. You know, maybe, you you know, life is hitting you every direction and you're out of strength. Well, these are some great confessions for strength. Maybe you're needing comfort and you feel like you're all alone. Well, these are some great confessions for comfort and strength in your life today. You know, you're not alone. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He's there with you today. And he wants to help you right there where you're at today. So let's go ahead and get into these great confessions. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10. The Lord is the strength of my life. Psalms 27.1. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. 1 John 4.4. 4. I will not let the word depart from before my eyes, for it is life. And it is health, Proverbs 4, 21 through 22. I let no crutch words come out of my mouth, but that which is good to edify in Ephesians 4, 20. I refuse to give place to the devil, Ephesians 4, 27. I speak the truth in love and grow up in him in all things, Ephesians 4, 15. No man shall take me out of his hand, for I have eternal life, John 10, 28. I let the peace of God rule my heart and refuse to worry about anything, Colossians 3, 15. And that which I refuse to allow here on earth, God also refuses to allow. And that which I do allow, God also allows to come to pass here on earth, Matthew 16, 19. I'm a believer. Now we have to stop right there, don't we? Well, I'm a believer. Are you a believer? Uh, are you a believer? Think about it for just a moment. I am a believer. What what signs are going to follow those who are believers? It says, these signs shall follow me. I speak with new tongues. I take authority over the devil. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. Mark 16, 17 through 18. I'm complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Colossians 2, 10. Isn't that good? Well, you know. God is doing some wonderful things, you know, and I have just a few confessions left here. And if you haven't already gotten energized and pumped up with your day today, well, hopefully these last few will help you to be encouraged. I've enjoyed my time with you here. Let's do these last few real quick here. And this is, if, you're, if you've been sick, this is great. I am the healed of the Lord, 
1 Peter 2, 24, Isaiah 53, 5. That's a good thing to be saying. You know, you're the healed, aren't you? And you look at the scripture there in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says that he by his stripes you were healed. So it was paid for at the cross. So accept your healing today and say, I am the healed of a Lord. Favor works out all my situations. Favor goes before me, behind me, side to side. Psalms 512. No weapon formed against me will succeed. Isaiah 54 17. I love that version. And I, I like here what's been prophesied for this year that this is my year for God to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think this year. Praise the Lord. That's what's prophesied for this year. And I believe he's doing that for you today, that this is going to be your year, that he's going to do more than exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think for you this year. I believe that that's what God's going to do in your life. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, you know, I've enjoyed our time today. I'm so glad that we got to spend a little time together. Look forward to spending a little time with you. Wednesday, we'll be starting a new series. We'll be announcing that, but it sh- we'll be starting a new ser- this series this Wednesday. God bless you, and I hope that you're ready for a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you. If you'd like to contact us for a prayer, praise reports, or offerings, go to jeremiasmithministries.podbean.com. Thank you for listening.